Welcome. Hi. Hi, I'm in a Hi. I'm in abyss. I'm you here. are. <laughs> so weird. There's nothing here. You're just like in a cloud. <laughs> and it's <laughs> one of those shots like with the Disney people where they're like. It's incredible. How are you in life? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I um you know it's my favorite season it's fall mm -hmm. um especially here in nashville because it's just beautiful out and i'm trying to soak it up because it's probably one of the last full seasons that i will be really busy again um mm -hmm. so i'm really i'm excited i'm also there's a part of me that's like grieving the time off that i've had yeah so i think i'm i'm settled right now into like a slow moving I, I like how my days feel slower and I just quit social media and that also adds an element of slow down like uh, so yeah I'm good I, I'm that's the that's the simple answer I feel very beautiful what is going through your mind just as far as like this is what we're gonna have to experiment with yeah well that's a good way to put it is it, it I do think you have to see it in some way like an experiment because, I mean, we don't know. Like, I remember when I told Paramore's manager, hey, I really don't want to be, I, I don't want to have this element of life. Like, this is a stressor that at one point or another was the only way that I knew I could stay um, productive from home or you know especially during COVID it was like well thank god for social media right because right. people who have businesses that's their channel mm -hmm. into connection with those people that might want either a service or a product or you know music or whatever but like I you know I'm at a place thankfully I, I know it's a it's a it's coming from a form of privilege to be able to walk away from it where I know that the band's going to be okay. Like the band has its own platforms and what I do on mine has always been like an extension of that, but it's also been me experimenting with what else I care about, whether it's political, it's just other individual endeavors like Good Die Young. Mm -hmm. I, I believe enough in my band and I believe enough in Good Die Young that they don't need me constantly like shitting out you know pointless material in order to stay relevant i i feel like we've gotten to a place with the business here and with the band where i can sort of let go and trust that there's going to be people to catch it mm -hmm. and i'm really thankful for that so it is an experiment it could, it could be the worst business decision i've ever made but for my health and for waking up in the morning and not feeling like I need to plug in to this channel. It's it's just really freeing. Well, because it is really weird. It is hard to be like, okay, I'm a musician, I'm a songwriter, I connect with people, like, you know, and I have this project that is beautiful and it touches so many people, but then I have this brand that isn't about me, but 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 it also still has the same essence and voice as oh. what you do in music. So how do you, how do you like separate them, but not? <laughs> right. Oh my God. <laughs> like with metalheads, you know, I mean, I know I didn't get to talk to you at the shoot very much because it was yeah. like a day for you guys, but I, I was thinking about this a lot on that set because I was like, dude, this is the first time that you've really been able to dig into music and culture in this way. Um, which is like a world that I'm very personally connected to and professionally connected to. It's like obviously Paramore is not a metal band, but I grew up touring with metal bands, hardcore bands, and it's a, it's a form of music that I love. So as soon as we had a chance to conceptualize around the idea of, you know, metallics and then tying in metal music, I was like, oh, fuck, this is so cool. Because in the beginning, I never, I would have never allowed it to get that close to my other world that I exist in because I would have felt like they could cannibalize each other and and you know like speaking of the letting go in a weird way this was me being able to let go and say okay Good Day Young has enough of its own brand 
kind of punk thing going that it's okay for us to touch this world and get closer to the other part of my existence, you know, because now I feel like the two can stand alone. And and that just like that took five or six years to be able to get there. But I I still think like for you, for anybody that kind of has like these little side projects or projects that maybe started as side projects and then become this bigger thing mm -hmm. um, for better or for worse. It's like you, it, I think that's the thing for me that I don't get about people who aren't super emotional about their business. Because mm -hmm. for me, if I didn't have an emotional tie to both sides, I really don't think I would have a compass and I wouldn't know I just wouldn't be able to follow that gut feeling that says, okay, keep Paramore separate, keep music separate from Good Day Young, and then one day wake up and be like, okay, it's all right for me to tie the two together a little bit more here today, mm -hmm. or it's okay for me to get off of social media and just mm -hmm. trust and believe that they're going to be, you know, both of these entities are going to be fine without me talking into it all the time right. publicly. So I don't know. It's all for me. I I can't advise this to everybody because it's not. It doesn't work for everybody. But even with Paramore growing up, it's always been about gut feelings. Unfortunately, we do a lot of things last minute because it's like, oh, we should fucking try this. And then our manager's like, God, why didn't you yes. tell us five months ago? You know. <laughs> but that's being a creative. You know. Right. How do you protect the community, like, yeah. from the business mindset? Is like. I could cry about it, you know, because it's, it's, it feels impossible sometimes to figure that out because we're not just running a business. We're not just like providing a tool for expression, but we're also like redefining business ideas, yeah, you know, sure. and how to be like a leader and a communicator in this new like form of running a business. And so how, how do you as like, as someone who has the vision for good die young like protect your audience oh man this is the stuff that i get the most excited about to to talk about um well i think what's what's really cool talking to you is you are i mean you are leading a charge in your community and you are help shape you you're helping to shape a pretty broad corner of a culture you know and I think like it, it's so wild to put that into perspective to really think about the opportunity that we have when we're leading a we're starting a business we're leading some sort of mm -hmm. some sort of way um, yeah. me it's all about humility because if if I'm willing to lead I, you know I have to be willing to admit mistakes or I have to be willing to be like oh yeah like. I fucked up here. Like I, I didn't mean to go this way. I should have turned here. You know, like when you, when you say that you you have moments where you're like, oh, did I just exploit the very thing that I, am, like I feel like I'm here to protect. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it's like to be a mother, but mm -hmm. to be some sort of a caretaker, you have to know it's it's part of the job also to not know all the answers and to be able to admit that I think is powerful. So for me, whether it's been Paramore, whether it's been Good Day Young, certainly there's been a lot of missteps just as there have been a lot of good moments and big growth spurts or whatever. Um, it's just like you're not human without those 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 mistakes those flaws. and flaws. And you're not a great leader if you can't be like, yeah, I fuck, like shit, I didn't mean to do that. Mm -hmm. or, that wasn't okay we did this this time and it didn't work the way we thought so let's try it this way this time um like that's a really simplistic way to look at it but maybe that's maybe that is a good way to look at it so that we can keep it from getting so convoluted and becoming this overwhelming mess that we want to run away from because i certainly relate to that my fight or flight is just like let's go i'm just like yeah when, like when i hit a wall i'm like no i'm out but but I think the, the better thing to do is to like face it and to be like, okay, that was a misstep. That mm -hmm. wasn't what was healthier for right. our company or for me mm -hmm. as a person. Cause that's like, man, that's the burden of leadership is that you, you're just, you're going to go the wrong way sometimes. Right. You gotta, you gotta turn around. 
I feel like there's for personally I haven't I haven't really spoken to nor have I really read that much from about business people who yeah. balance and like their mental emotional physical health while like maintaining a business and um and I feel too like especially now you're not just running a business you're also like a creative director like a marketing director you have to think like in so many different ways and um and so I guess I'm I'm really curious about how you know you sort of live in both worlds like how do you live in those two worlds and like not abuse one or the other or like uh, avoid one or the other more often or is it a constant ebb and flow or do you feel like you do have ways to like keep them both sort of happy within yourself well being home since 2018 has given me more it's given me more time to to try and understand how to balance the two because being on like while we were on the road for after laughter we were developing our first hair care products and literally shipping samples from the lab and you know in Canada or America at the time to all the way over to England while we were playing you know I remember literally being at, at um, Royal Albert Hall which was such a big that was such a huge moment for us to be able to play this venue and I was so stressed that the package, the delivery of the samples was, wasn't going to get to the venue on time mm -hmm. for us. Like I was thinking about our other business, you know, me and Brian, because Brian was of course on tour with me. So it, that was really, that was interesting and, and it was very stressful for a while, but then I got to come home and Paramore chose to be, you know, to sort of take some time off and it really gave me a chance catch up with Good Day Young and Good Day Young's gone through a lot of growth and you know the the growth can be super fun or it can be super super hard and it right. just, that changes all the time but um I've been really happy to, to like be able to be present physically for that because like I said this is probably my last season of really being fully here all the time mm -hmm. um, for a while at least until whenever the next album cycle starts and ends you know so okay. I like I think it'll be, I'll have to refigure it out again, but I've always been really protective of Good Die Young because I, I knew people would, were just going to say, oh, it's, it's Haley from Paramore's brand, you know, mm -hmm. and I want Good Die Young to live beyond my abilities as a singer, a performer, or whatever. I, I want it to be its own thing, and for, you know, 50 years from now, people talk about us the way they talk about Manic Panic, and, you know, I think we're, I think we're on the way to that, you know? Right. It's a really long time to build a business. So I'm totally fine with us, you know, making a few mistakes and growing and learning. And then again, like me being able to have moments where I'm like, okay, I'm going to let this go a little bit more and see how it blossoms without me or with me standing back a little further. Um, and I don't know. I don't even know. Like, I would love for business people to talk about that more because mm -hmm. I just like, there's no right way. It's almost like, it's the same as any relationship, right? They don't give you a manual for it. You just sort of have to go by feel or by parts. And I'm I'm more of a feel, a gut person. You know? uh -huh. What were some of those examples that you sort of redefine the idea of business to fit you? Oh man, oh probably so so many more than I can even remember. Um, it was so strange to be on tour talking about trying to make a hair dye company and then the next month being in like different investors offices trying to get a feel for whether or not this sounded like a promising endeavor mm -hmm. um, and we met a lot of people that just were like hair isn't a you know, like that's not a business like hair dye is not going to be scalable or you know you're you're not really going to be able to get investors to believe in this because how will they get a return on their investment you know mm -hmm. And me and Brian just kept saying, like, look, it's already a thing, but it's going to become more of a thing as it's becoming more mainstream. Mm -hmm. And that was a case of us having to follow that gut belief. And then, you know, as we moved into actually having a business and having to make decisions for that, oh, there's been so many things. Like, I remember us thinking, like, 
Sephora was the end all be all for us. Mm. And Sephora is, Sephora is amazing, like such a great beauty retailer. They're doing a lot of really cool initiatives on like green beauty and, and sustainability. Everyone's trying to, you know, catch up to that, right? right? I really thought like that's where our people are. That's where the people that are gonna go buy, you know, their loud, bright makeup, they're gonna reach for loud, bright hair dye. And like the truth of the matter is it was, we were too early to market with them. And it was so exciting that they gave us a chance, but like what I thought was gonna be the winning ticket for us wasn't. And what, what's been the winning ticket for now, I mean, today as of October or whatever it is, is has been Sally Beauty. And Sally Beauty, I grew up going to on the road um, for Manic Panic or literally whatever they had. I was just looking for red or versions of red that I could throw on before a show. And um, and I just kind of, to be honest, I think I discounted them because it was like an older brand. Hmm. It was an older brand that had been around and I thought, well, we're a new brand and let's try to do something that's new. And you know, there's no hair dye like us in Sephora. So let's shoot for that. And I was honestly wrong. Like, and I think that that's a good lesson for me to, to know that sometimes you're not exactly right about who your audience is or what, what the reason is that people are drawn to your brand um what they're looking for from you uh, there's just there's been so many examples of that type of thing mm -hmm. there's also been examples where investors or people tried to tell us what we should do and we've known that's not no like it's just been like a red flag like mm -hmm. or a red light flashing in my heart that's just like no and we've been right you know in those right. cases half of the time if not more we're right because we know who we know who we are as a, as a business but but it's funny how the audience will always surprise you and I, I think I say audience because I'm coming from a music profession right um, but, but that's also what I love because they're they're unique like whoever you're marketing to like she shreds is marketing to different people and you also in some cases you don't know who you're marketing to because you might have someone who's never picked up a guitar that loves right. metal music and they pass this magazine or they see you online and they're like oh shit i want to buy into this i want to understand this because i'm not from this world you know so i always love when an audience surprises you and i've had that feeling with paramore and I get that feeling all the time with with good die young and it's like it's what makes me excited to grow good die young um because i'm like dude we don't even know who we might reach and who might need this in their life that right. it becomes more than just a product. It's like an ethos. It's like a, a spirit. Part of the reason why I was excited to be in the Metalheads campaign was because like, I remember really, I have this memory with hair dye, like when I was a kid, like very specifically dyeing my hair and like going to school and like getting kicked out for dyeing my hair. And I feel like that was the moment where I realized that I was like anti-system. <laughs> and I was like six, <laughs> you know? And I was like, fuck them, you know? And I just like kept dyeing my hair. But like, it was, it is that, you know? It, it is like, I think for a lot of people, like the introduction to like, oh, you're different like you want to exist in a different world oh yes oh my god yes you know um oh, so sick <laughs> i am constantly battling with the idea of calling myself a businesswoman because i think that that idea is so it just feels very toxic and like it makes it seem like there's a hierarchy and that i'm supposed to like be a certain way and and i think what we're talking about i feel like is actually a sort of a new way of approaching business yeah, and absolutely. you know and like in a like and it gets sort of mis like skewed because you're still selling something and that idea of selling something is still very like capitalistic but like we're working towards how you can offer it instead of selling it right yeah. And people are smart. Like I, I do, I've said this since I was a kid and this is literally what I told a record label when I was 15. I was like, 
you you want to make money i want to make music mm -hmm. people that you're selling to are no better mm -hmm. they know better and when you put something in front of them that isn't real you know because they wanted me to be just me no mm -hmm. band like just me I was already in Paramore, so I was very, I was like, well, this is confusing because I make music with this band, but you want me. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to tell them, like, people are smart and they can sniff out bullshit. And I don't understand, like, if you want to make money, then don't you want to not be full of shit? Right. Like, don't you want to offer something that people know they can believe in? Because I don't understand the, like, I think what's, what's hard about loving punk music mm -hmm. being a part of any subset of punk culture mm -hmm. like <laughs> we're trying to spread this word somehow mm -hmm. whether that be anti-capitalism or whether that be fucking anything anything you give a shit about right mm -hmm. any cause you care about any yes. pers personal feeling you want to get off your chest yes. like it sucks because <laughs> the world, the, the systems that we're already living in are set and we're all trying to change it as fast as we can, mm -hmm. but we're fucking in it. And it's like, I, I do, I get that struggle between like, oh my God, like I'm just basically asking people to buy shit all the time. Uh -huh. But what about, what about someone genuinely listening to, you name your favorite, hardcore band, punk band, you know, let's say Fugazi. Fugazi didn't even want to have shows over $5. They didn't want to sell merch because capitalism is the worst. Mm -hmm. so, but like, what if someone who loves Fugazi also went to school for marketing and they genuinely fucking love marketing? Like, what do you do with that? What do you do when your passion is like, I love putting together a concept and like putting it out there and I find that with sweet beef a lot. Mm. I have a, a real enthusiasm about conceptual visuals and things, you know, cohesion, you know, and being able to place that out on a, you know, put it on a silver platter for people if they want it or not. Mm -hmm. like, you could call that like selling out, but you, you can call it whatever you want, but it's passion. It's right. But hopefully, the people are smart enough that they know whether something's coming from a genuine place or you're just trying to make a buck and you're just trying to fucking get your retirement figured out. Right. Really. I, I don't know. Like it's, that's never going to be, that's never going to be settled because I think you, as long as you're true to who you are, you're going to have tension about it. And that's what makes you a badass. That's what makes you true. a great businesswoman is that you wake up every day and you live in the tension of I fucking love my community. I love what I get to do. Hmm. And I also may want to fucking, I don't know, take care of Emily or take care of myself and my dog. Or, right. I don't know. It's just always right. going to be there. What you're saying about like marketing and loving punk, it's like, oh shit, like, well, this is the first time that anything, those two perspectives have like joined together. Hmm. So like, what are we going to do with that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and if, and honestly too, it's like, we either, we either disrupt the market and inject ourselves into places to say, I am relevant here. My people are relevant here. And I have something that I believe in that I want to do. Like, it's not about standing out. It's about what you stand for, you know? Right, so right. I think it's fucking cool. I love, I, my favorite thing is when you know, when Paramore got to a point where we were flying to festivals and we were flying like business class, we would mm -hmm. sit next to all these dudes in suits and mm -hmm. they would be very visibly bummed out that we were around because I was just like with bright orange and pink hair, you know, and like my eyebrows drawn on and crazy oh. colors. And we literally looked nuts sitting next to them. And it was always just my absolute favorite feeling because it's, I, I love subversion. I think no matter where you come from, there's a reason to disrupt something. I've learned so much of myself through running a business, through the mistakes that I've made and, and all of that. And I think like, actually, like, I think I'm, or maybe I've been realizing this, but I feel like writing music and being a musician 
has like made me realize like all of the different traumas that I have and then running a business has allowed me to like face them and heal them because you have to in order to take care of like everyone else around you <laughs> that's so good oh my god that's so that's such a good way to put it you know and I feel like that's actually like like now that I'm thinking about it like act a, such a beautiful balance of both right it's like I'm constantly going to be learning about the things that I that I have inside of me through music because that's its point to like yeah. express it and then through the business I maybe I can offer like ways of healing my question to you is like what like do you basically do you feel the same way like has has how have you seen yourself mirrored through your actions of like collaborating on a business side not not on a musician side but like on like a let's work together to like send a message out to thousands of people well you have a our team is amazing here uh you've met everybody mm -hmm. on the shoot but what i've been so thankful for is that I, you know getting into a business that's separate from music where i feel like musicians are allowed to be these like mm -hmm. messy creatures and especially if you're in some sort of position where you know i just think about like the times where one of us has just been a total dick after a show because we had a bad show and like it's just like that's not nice or pretty for anybody right but for some reason people allow it because it's like oh they're a, a musician <laughs> like mm -hmm. and, and i think it's why so many of us in bands have this like arrested development we have to get over or figure out at a certain point some people later than others and i hope i'm like i hope i'm early i'm on the early side but like with business it's not that because i'm not I don't walk into Good Die Young being like, I'm fucking Haley from Paramore. Mm -hmm. I feel very humbled by it because I don't, I mean, I don't profess to be like a great, great business person, like numbers and mm -hmm. you know, analytics. I'm not that. Um, so we have people here that are very gifted at that. We have people that are super gifted in visuals and we have people that are really passionate about community and communication. And I think I've been the most grateful for those strengths and these people because these are things that I want to be. I want to be all of that for everybody. And it's like, again, that moment of knowing like you can't, you can't do it all. Mm -hmm. um, and I, like, I, don't know, I, just, I think about Becca and Beef who work here. Mm -hmm. They've been here a really long time. Jackie's the, the one who's been here as long, almost as long. Um, so we have like a core team that have been here for a while and I almost feel like they're this very strange second generation of Brian and I where I know if I couldn't be here for six months, like I trust them and I know that they give a shit about the message and the mission just as much as they care about the products. Right. And I feel like I've gone down a rabbit trail here and I don't even know where I'm going to end up, but like I... I really, I don't know, I guess, I guess all I'm trying to say is like without a team of people who have some sort of like-mindedness in that we give a shit about the mission and the actual message and the spirit behind Good Day Young, mm -hmm. it makes it feel like it's a cause, not just a company. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part that, that's the part that going between music and Good Day Young, it's like, well, they're both a cause to me. Right. They both matter in this spiritual way to me. Right. Um, and I don't even know, I, I, to be honest, I don't even know if I'm answering your question now, but- um, I don't even know what I asked. So oh keep, my God. Like, keep I, I'm going. Like, I'm just like, oh. But, um, but anyway, all this to say, like, yeah. I'm really thankful for the, for the team because yeah. they've been through some crazy shit with us too. And because I know that we're aligned, like there's an alignment. We all are different and we all have different strengths and probably different personal goals, right? But like, as far as Good Dayang is concerned and as far as Paramore is concerned, I know I'm in places that, hey, we're all safe with each other mm -hmm. because everyone's a good person that's like just good and has your back. But it's also like, we're here to make a difference in some way. Right. It's not 
about, you know, how rich are we going to be at the end of this? And like, you know, can we all build huge houses in a gated community next to each other? <laughs> like, right. It's actually about not isolating ourselves, but connecting ourselves deeper into these other closets where there's other people that are coming from other walks of life that need outlets. And we're hoping to offer an outlet through both music or through fair diets. Like, I feel like that's the synergy between the two. And again, I have no idea what you ask now because I fucking <laughs> talked too much. Tell me about, like, what was the inspiration with Metalheads? You talked about it a little bit. Yeah. But, like, what was the concept? Why did you choose the, like, featured artists and the musical guests? And it just seemed like there were a lot of details. Well, I try not to pull my, you know, my paramour weight ever with, with Good Die Young because I want, again, I want Good Die Young to be its own thing. I wanted to build its own muscles, right? Mm -hmm. But with this, it was kind of like, once we realized, Brian and I for years have been talking about a line of dye that it's more about the experience and it looking, you know, the, the way like people will buy like um, a face mask because it's glittery. That shit isn't doing anything for your skin. It's right. just an experience and you want to take a photo of it and you want to be in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, well, how can we make a high shine, you know, semi-perm dye that has like mica mineral in it, um, you know, and, or, or like, and at the time we didn't even know, we didn't know you could sustainably source that. We didn't know that, um, you know, if it was even going to be possible for dye, but we were dreaming about it. And when it finally became a reality, it was like, okay, you know, and, and speaking to the conversations with beef and with the rest of the team about what the, what, you know, what visuals might look like. It was like, you should just, metal we should just tie metals into it we wanted these products to look metallic so mm -hmm. let's fucking do the music thing like let's go there and, um, and i was just like well i probably have some friends that might, might be interested i knew daniel from turnstile had been wearing good die young for a few years and mm -hmm. i don't friends with those guys and one of my favorite hardcore bands ever at this point um so i was like that, that was i don't i don't even know remember if that first ideas but it was like who what do we want to call the, the name you know of the of the guy and what do we want those inspirations to be and we just started listing shit like we we're all of our marketing meetings all of our like um any names brainstorms it's just us just trying to make each other laugh like mm -hmm. we're just, we're just cracking jokes and seeing who's yeah. funny it's very it's very cute but, um, but this one was just so seamless and quick. It was like, oh, we know exactly what we want this, this to be. And then, you know, like with the shoot, it was like, okay, let's gather up a bunch of friends and people that are important to this community, people mm -hmm. that have something to say mm -hmm. and they want to make their presence known and all that. And like, for instance, Stevis being there was a really cool thing for me because I grew up touring with the Chariot and he was in the Chariot mm -hmm. at the time. The Chariot was one of my favorite bands as a teenager, Josh Scoggin. He was in Mama Jean when I was growing up, and I wanted to be him. Like I didn't, I didn't have a whole lot of like um, role models that I wanted to emulate on stage, yeah. um, other than maybe like Karen O. And he also named a shade after after Karen O. But um, yeah, I just, man, like this was just a. It honestly, felt like I was in heaven. And it was so, it meant so much to me that the rest of the team was also very excited about this because this is also a culture that they understand and that they love. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to ramble too much more about it, but it was just so fucking cool to have you there. And She Shreds is so, is such an important thing. Just so you know, like I, I, I love what you do. And I think you're so mega talented as well that it's just was like, Yes, of course. Of course you need to be a part of this. If you wanted to. If you didn't want to, we wouldn't have hassled you about it. But like <laughs> it was just like very, very fucking cool to have people that have done a lot of good shit and and also look badass. Like Danny fucking Danny, man. I know. I know. So cool. And I <laughs> had wanted to meet her for so long and it was a dream to just this this cast that we assembled was like, Are you kidding me? I wanted to talk a little bit about you and 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 Brian's collaborations, because obviously, like y'all uh, started Good Night Young, and 
it's very cute to watch you two like <laughs> just interact in general. Yeah. <laughs> so like, what do you both like? How? What do you both bring to the table, basically? Like, where do you like? Listen, I can't do this. Like, this is one hundred percent. And what does he know? Like, okay, this is this is what you're good at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He well, first he would very quickly respond by saying he's no good at social media. He's no good at <laughs> oh, shit. you know that side of things that's like very forward facing. He obviously is brilliant at like you know putting your look together and. Yes getting you ready to present yourself in a way that you want to like there's nobody better or safer to go to and be like i feel like this and i really want to feel like this yeah and, and there's not a better example of when i not know i was going to get a divorce yet but i was at my lowest point as a person um at age 26 and I went to him and i was like dude if i look in the mirror again and i see that fucking misery business bitch in my mirror, I'm gonna scream. Like, I I don't wanna look, I don't wanna be, I'm not that person right now. And, mm -hmm. and I I need help, you know? I, I, I feel like I almost need to get so far away from her so that I can get better, you know? Mm -hmm. And he didn't bat an eye and I was like, you know, what if we just fucking wipe the color away? Like, what if I'm just not a bright, loud looking person for a while? Mm -hmm. um, and we bleached my hair and he was so good at letting me have that moment without involving his feelings about, well, what about Good Day Young? And what about all the things people might say because you don't look like mm -hmm. this paramour? <laughs> like, I, it, it was so great. And that's what he does with everybody. Like, anyone that I've ever seen go to him with some sort of identity crisis or just lack of confidence, they leave his chair feeling better about themselves. And that's, that's the first thing that I knew he was good at, but we started to die young and we really got into making stuff. He's just so dedicated to the science of it and, and like really wants it to be good. He doesn't want to cut corners. He doesn't want he doesn't want people to, to to not get everything they want out of it. And of course it's it's science. It's not a miracle. It's like I mean I guess science is a miracle, but it's like he also knows the ex what expectations to have and what expectations to not have about it. And I think that's been really helpful for me because I'm like, oh, what do you mean you can't like go from having black hair to, you know, hot pink hair to green hair the next day? Mm -hmm. You know, like, he, yeah, it's like, he, I don't know. I, I just know that he would tell you that his strengths involve actually creating like the yeah. actual product and, and knowing how to communicate those needs to Becca who's also like his right hand when it comes to the development aspects and you know Becca was in Omaha at the lab this last week you know we have to we have to be into that stuff as much as we're into the shit that you see on the website and the shit that you see on our social media but I would say my strength is more marketing and I love coffee. Like I, I love like and and beef is really really good at coming up with funny little one liners to put on our tubes. Like when you get a good day young product and you have to read about it, like we don't we don't always just want it to be like boring shit. You know we want it to be the whole experience to be totally. fun. You feel the personality. You feel like you're part of it. And you can support it. Like you have a community to call to write if you need help. You know. Um, that's, I mean, right now, beef's kind of taking over a lot of that, but I would say that that's always been my favorite part is just like, how do I communicate this in a way that it relates to a lot of people, but it's also got its own personality and people know exactly what we are when they pick up something and they read it or they smell right. it or they put it in their hands, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for that shit. So going back to like, the kid who loves Fugazi but also really loves marketing and concepts, that's me. Like, I'm that kid. Right. Do you feel like there are other ways of connecting that you're looking forward to experimenting with, to trying? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've talked to, we, we've had the same manager since we were 15, 16 years old, like our entire career. And he was 30 when he started with us and now he's a dad and he's old, you know. Yes. And it feels like he's my dad some days. Uh -huh. I was talking to him about this the other day and I was like, man, like 
What about a world that we like kind of similar to what we used to live in a little bit more analog, still connected, still internet and all that shit. But like, why can't I get off social media, but, but like blog again, or like, or start writing pieces for publications and, you know, finding ways to, I don't know whether it's causes that I care about, um, ad, you know, just advocacy in general, or whether it's just like talking about experiences on the road or travel or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like we used to do that, and and people used to have the attention span for that right. too. You know? um, and and I wonder if the pendulum is swinging a little bit, where I'm starting to see. There's been a lot of people that have left socials recently. A lot of big artists and um, there's plenty of actors and actresses that don't have it. Um, but I'm just, I, I don't know. It, I think I'm looking forward to figuring that out. Yeah. What is it gonna, what's it gonna be like? I'm, I'm excited because I know it's gonna give me a lot of extra time.